Hi, I'm Christy from Stay With It, and welcome to That's Engineering. Today, I'm talking to Kwanisha, and Kwanisha is a user experience and quality analyst manager. So that's kind of a mouthful. So can you tell me a little bit about what that actually means and what you do? Sure. So what I do is called uh, user experience. I'm a human factors engineer. I manage a team of human factors engineers, graphic designers, interaction designers, business analysts, and quality analysts. And they all work on software for Intel. Um, and they work on the front end of the software. They do a lot of user interviews. Um, they do mock-ups and wireframes and designs. Uh, and then they hand these designs off and work with the developers who then actually develop the actual software for Intel. Cool. And so how long have you been doing that? I've been in this role for about a month and a half. Prior to that, I was the team lead for about a year. And my team is located um, in Oregon, in California, Arizona, and Costa Rica, and Malaysia. Wow. So it's sort of all spread out and all different countries and continents. So how, how does that work all together? Um, I have to be very careful about time management. <laughs> Sometimes I have very early morning calls, sometimes I have very late calls, but my team, they're an excellent group of professionals to work with, um, very high quality individuals, and they don't really need any hand-holding. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So you got your bachelor's from Stanford in science, technology, and society, and then a master's and PhD at North Carolina A&T in industrial and systems engineering. So when you were there, what were your expectations of what a job was going to look like once you graduated? In undergrad, I was lucky enough to where I secured four internships um, out of my five years in undergrad. Mm -hmm. And uh, in those internships, I uh, initially I thought that engineers were always in a, a lab somewhere or that they'd all be in a, in a manufacturing facility with hard hats and earplugs and hard <laughs> steel toe boots and things. Yeah. But thanks to my internships, I realized that engineers don't all work in labs and all work in manufacturing facilities, that some of us work in nice offices <laughs> or <laughs> other locations. And uh, I got uh, I got excited by that. I was like, oh, okay, well, this is something I can actually see myself doing long term, like in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, I like going out to the field every once in a while, but mm -hmm. I really like being in the office too. Um, and then when I got to grad school, I had several more jobs that actually did have me in the field. So I got to understand what it is I don't like right. <laughs> and what it is I do like. That's awesome. So I was lucky enough to, by the time I finished undergrad and grad school, I had a total of five internships and three assistantships. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of experience. <laughs> um, so did you always know that you wanted to be an engineer? Um, well, one of the earliest recollections for me about my abilities and my interests are around remote controls. I used to always take the remote controls apart <laughs> and try to put them back together again before my mother came home from work every day. Sometimes I would succeed and she would <laughs> never know. Other times she'd come home and it'd be a big mess and I'd get in trouble. Um, very early on. Uh, by the time I got to middle school and high school, I had started to do a lot more um, history reading, mm -hmm. and I just really just fell in love with, um, with uh, Leonardo da Vinci and with Dr. Mae Jemison, actually. Oh. So I fell in love with a lot of stuff that they, that they had worked on, um, Dr. Mae Jemison and NASA, everything that she did there, uh, just being a pioneer and a trailblazer there. I just fell in love with a lot of that, and over time I just kind of came to the point where I am now, but my path to engineering has not been the traditional route. I didn't just go straight through engineering all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have minors, double minors in classics and in African American studies. Oh, wow. um, and then also I have psychology classes as well in my background, um, and then also French and Latin. So I didn't have a traditional route through mm -hmm. engineering, um, but eventually I'm an engineer now. Right, right. So. Did you have role models and mentors that sort of helped you navigate through? Uh, and then how did you end up sort of taking such an interdisciplinary <laughs> route to get to the end? Uh, well, my initial role model growing up was Dr. Mae Jemison. Mm -hmm. She's part of the reason why I applied to Stanford. And actually, when I applied to Stanford, I was going to the chemical engineering program. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also going to minor in African American studies. So I got one of those things right by the end of my time <laughs> at Stanford. Um, but the other parts of it, though, um, when I got to uh, undergrad, my mentors and role models became the grad students who were in Nesby. Okay. Nesby was a huge part of why I am where I am today and like why I was able to stick through and still become an engineer at the end of all of it. Um, Nesby, uh, the group there at Stanford, it was a very welcoming uh, chapter. Um, we did a lot of things uh, personally together as well as professionally, volunteered everything. There were study jams, there were uh, field trips, all types of things. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my mentors came from the graduate students who were in that Nesby chapter with us. And as I met them and talked with them, I saw that, I, I saw, I saw that you know what, I want to get a graduate degree. And I eventually did mm -hmm. and went on to that path. But for me, I was still like, I'm so interested in history. 
I'm so interested in history and I'm also interested in how technology has evolved mm -hmm. as an extension of us, not not so much as, oh, it's going to replace us in the future, but as an extension of our own capabilities. And I've always been very interested in that, but I was like, how do I tie that into being an engineer kind right. of thing? It seems like it's more like anthropology or psychology kind of related stuff. But then that's how I found human factors engineering, which is a subset within industrial and systems engineering. And that's how I kind of found my way through it. Um, and then also, as I worked my internships, I met a lot of professionals there who also did not take traditional engineering routes. Mm -hmm. Some of them worked for 10 years as engineers without engineering degrees at all. Wow. And then they went back and got an engineering degree to help, uh, to help them advance in their jobs. But I met a lot of persons who were not traditional engineers all the way straight through. I met some that were and some that weren't. And then for me, I realized that, that the, traditional, the, not, the traditional route in engineering just wasn't a fit for my interests. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a fit for my values. And then it wasn't a fit for where I was in my life at that time and also how I want to work to accomplish things. I like to work in, in, in a multi multidisciplinary nature type of job. That's why my team is so diverse, right? right. I, most, I manage a team of human factors engineers and graphic designers, people who do front end, they do back end, they mm -hmm. do testing, they do writing requirements. Um, and I'm very, I'm very much about that. So for me, it's just a, a further reflection or a further extension of my studies. Right. I think that's great. I think that's a great story for students to hear because they don't always know that you don't just have to do that traditional engineering route. Um, you know, you can pursue more of the things that you're passionate about and then still be able to apply them back to engineering. Mm -hmm. So I think that's awesome. And thank you so much for sharing that story with us. Um, and for more resources and support, you can check out staywithit.org or facebook.com slash engineering. So I'll see you next time on That's Engineering.